You know, when I think about when I would use a KDZ Ultra, and that's a zirconia core or coping overlaid with beautiful powder liquid ceramic. When I think about when I would use those, one is uh, anterior bridges that are greater than three units. We certainly can't use lithium disilicate or even our high translucency zirconia. So when I do anterior bridges, I like to use the Ultra. I've eliminated metal almost completely in my practice. And when we look at zirconia, basically that's a substitute for metal. So if, let's say I had a six unit bridge from tooth number six to tooth number 11. I need a strong core, but I want it to look good. It's part of the aesthetic zone. I will use the zirconia in the Ultra as my core. So if we did a cross section, let's say of uh, uh, the central, that would be the cross section. This would be the connector to the next central. I want the strength of the zirconia. So let's say this would, the core on a, on a full coverage crown. And then I want to overlay with a beautiful layered material to optimize aesthetics. So I have the advantages of depth through the powder liquid where the ceramics is going to put dentin, enamel, translucent, opalescent ceramics overlaid on a core. And the nice thing about this core versus a PFM, this is tooth colored or dentin shaded. And it's usually about 0.5 millimeters thick. So now when light penetrates through all these beautiful layers the ceramics put in and it hits the zirconia, the zirconia acts like dentin. And so we get refraction and ref reflection of light back through that ceramic. Far superior aesthetics, in my opinion, than porcelain fused and metal crown. So I like them for anterior bridges. I like them for multi-unit posteriors. So the anterior bridges would be over three units. Because if it's three units or less, I can either use Emax, lithium disilicate, or I can use Bruxer HT, or Bruxer Aesthetic, the high translucency. So greater than three units in the anterior, and then all my posterior bridges would be ultra, because I like the powder liquid laid on top of that. Next would be situations where I would have single crowns in the posterior where I want to optimize strength and aesthetics. Again, I see do this a lot of times on maxillary molars where the zirconia is milled to full contour on a functional cusp. This would be our palatal cusp which is functional. But now on the buckle where I want optimal aesthetics, the ceramics can overlay this aesthetic area, which is non-functional. So I get all this beautiful depth of color from the powder liquid, and then I get this optimal strength on the functional cusp, because the flexural strength of our zirconia is 1,500 megapascals. You're not going to break that. Where the overlaid powder liquid, just like we see with a PFM, is 100. So the advantage of this is the patient's beaten up on this functional cusp, on the marginal ridge, in a material they're not going to break. And then we have the beauty of the overlaying ceramic on top of that zirconia. Best of both worlds. So anterior bridges greater than three units. All my posterior bridges and single crowns, primarily molars, some premolars, on the patients that I call destroyers that beat up everything, then I like to have something that's a little stronger on functional cusp. Hope that clarifies when I would use the KDZ Ultra as compared to other restorative materials.